Welcome to the Oilers Recap as the Oilers knock off Hillsdale 31-21, the final, as uh, the Oilers uh, disrupt homecoming for the Chargers here. And before we get to the game, Coach, uh, as an individual thing here, let's talk about it. You guys open up with the loss against Truman. You got three straight road games. You come away with three straight wins. That's got to make you guys feel good and have some confidence going into this stretch run. Yeah, I think uh, anytime you can go on the road and win a college football game, uh, no matter the outcome uh, score-wise, you, you got to be happy, right? If, if if you can go on the road and play winning football, uh, that, that's a good thing. And uh, and we've been able to do that the last three weeks. Each game had a different flavor, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, but the end result was the Oilers coming out on top, and we're certainly very proud of the effort of our kids. Well, let's get into this one. You guys got off to the quick start and really took a stranglehold on this one on both sides of the ball, uh, both offense and defense. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think a, a fast start is something that you always say that you want, but a fast start is just a matter of execution, right? It's, it's which team settles in first and does what it is that they came there to do, and I thought offensively and defensively we were able to do that right away on both sides of the ball, and, and the scoreboard was ref, reflective of that, and I think it's contagious. And, uh, and we played a really, really good first half of football. I was proud of the way we played. Let's talk about the offense first. Your quarterback, Alec Bornhorst, is- Every week he seems to get a little more confident, a little more comfortable, and without a doubt, uh, his most balanced performance of his career. Yeah, Alec, I mean, you know, we opened up the game throwing the football. You know, we opened up the game throwing four verts, and uh, and he ripped it uh, right there to get us going, and that was good because you got to go against tendencies from time to time. And uh, for us, you know, it just became a thing where – he was very comfortable with what we were doing. And, uh, you know, we had two freshman offensive linemen out there. And uh, and those those senior leaders, those upperclassmen, those captains weathered the storm and, and did a good job for us. 229 yards passing, three touchdowns, and then uh, he, rushing. He was a beast, especially in that first half uh, as he finishes up with 64 uh, rushing yards as well. So a strong performance by him. And then the complimentary pieces were there as well. Brian Benson running with anger uh, and violence like we're used to seeing him run and being effective. Yeah, Brian Benson is uh, is a heck of a tailback and a heck of a competitor. Uh, you know, you want the ball in that kid's hands. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, he, he runs with a physical style. Uh, that's that's you know been his hallmark over the years, and we're certainly glad he's back there and uh, and did a heck of a job. On the defensive side, you guys uh, forced turnovers in this one, and certainly, especially with the way uh, that fourth quarter went, those turnovers ended up being huge in this one. Yeah, every possession is so valuable. I mean, we've talked about how the clock runs now, right? Those new clock rules in the NCAA. Every possession is valuable uh, right now. And and for our defense to create those turnovers and for our defense to stand tall down there in that red zone a couple times with a missed field goal, right, and, 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 you know, stood tall on that drive, interception in the end zone, just some of those things. I mean, they're so pivotal in the course of a football game. Well, I know you're going to say next man up and all the things that go with that, and that certainly is absolutely true, but you lose your center partway through this one, Mike Sine, and uh, again, while it's next man up, it certainly points to how delicate and how important that exchange between center and quarterback really can be because it caused some problems. Well, it did. It did. And, and you know, um, right now our, our backup center, I mean, there's no mystery there. Our backup center is our starting left guard, except for the fact that our starting left guard, Cole Jones, was out this week uh, due to an injury sustained last week. And uh, we'll be excited to welcome Cole back next week and, um, and you know, and see what happens with Michael. Certainly we're hoping and praying that uh, everything's good with him. Um, but that put us in a position to play our third string center. And uh, that's a young man that's a true freshman. Uh, that came in and uh, and you know didn't really play a ton of center, but we were trying to create one, and, and we've been doing that the last month and a half, two months with him since he's arrived on campus. And you know what? I'm proud of his effort. I think the entire team is. They rally behind him. It's not easy to snap a ball and then go block. And and uh, and Brian Faith played admirably, you know. And and uh, those exchange things. I mean, that's a game of football. That happens. But boy, did he compete, and I was proud of him for that. I was going to go to that next. I thought while there were some struggles with that and, and, you know, those two guys involved in that, he had a couple of key blocks on a couple of those runs that helped salt things away on that one drive. 
Well, yeah, I mean, we were, that, that's the way. Although we didn't start two true freshmen on the offensive line, we started one in uh, in left guard Ethan Lane. Uh, but then after you know a short amount of time, in comes Brian Faith, and so not only are you starting two true freshmen, they're lined up side by side, and uh, and they're out there just scrapping. And uh, the leadership of Mike Jarrell and Brennan Davies uh, certainly showed up out there as a calming effect for them on the offensive line, and uh, just proud of those guys. Composure, I thought, was key as well. Things go a little sideways. They get the two touchdowns uh, inside of about three minutes. But you guys stayed calm. You, you, you were able to right the ship. You put together a good long drive uh, that you get the field goal. That really kind of took back control of things. And, and that composure, again, is another thing you guys can build on. Well, I think you're absolutely right. You know, I, I think that we, we talk about uh, being about – being about the fight, not about the outcome. Are we an outcome-based team or are we a fight-based team? We want to be about the fight here. Uh, and, and, and what we mean by that is, is is fight every play, right? Do your job every play. Fight every play. Don't worry about the outcome. Uh, outcome-based teams uh, tend to not keep their composure in those moments. And I thought we responded in a big way, and I was proud of them. Well, Coach, uh, as we said, you get the three straight wins. You improve to three and one. You get to come home next week for a homecoming matchup and add to it. Well, we'll uh, we'll certainly be looking forward to coming uh, coming home to Donnell Stadium and uh, getting back to it uh, on Monday and uh, seeing if we can't get this football team a little better. And I, I know their focus is where it needs to be right now, and uh, and that is to get back to work and prepare for the next opponent. All right, coach, appreciate your time. Go Oilers. Go Oilers. Thanks, Tim. We've been uh, you've been listening to the Oiler Recap uh, Service of University of Finley Athletics.